it's time to profess our undying affection for cinema's most eternal love stories. But I, I don't understand. I'm supposed to be beautiful. But you are beautiful. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best romantic movie couples. You'll find I'm a gentleman to for this list, we're taking a look at on-screen couples with the most meaningful relationships and the best romantic chemistry. Baby, I'm going to treat you so nice, you're never going to want to let me go. We're giving away the endings of a few of these love stories, so a spoiler alert may be in order. Christ, yes. Number 10, Edward Lewis and Vivian Ward, Pretty Woman. Well, I'm pleased to meet you both. This is a friend of mine, Vivian Ward. Hi, really glad to Morris, meet you. David. Pretty Woman is a regular Cinderella story. In this case, however, Prince Charming is a wealthy businessman and our unlikely princess is an L.A. hooker. What do you want? What do you do? Everything. But I don't kiss on the mouth. Like all fairy tales, Edward and Vivian's courtship might not be the most realistic. Yet you totally buy into the fantasy because of the genuine connection between Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. How is your day, dear? Nice tie. I got it for you. Their scenes range from funny to sweet to touching to sweepingly romantic. They both save each other from their lonely lives and learn what it truly means to be loved with a storybook ending. So what happened after he climbed up the tower and rescued her? She rescues him right back. Number nine, Jesse and Celine, the Before Trilogy. What's doing? No delusions, no projections. We'll just make tonight great. Okay, let's do that. Jesse and Celine share one of the most unique romances in film. They first meet briefly in Before Sunrise, reunite almost a decade later in Before Sunset, and deal with married life in Before Midnight. I feel a passive-aggressive threat in everything you say. Either do this, or I will resent you for the rest of our lives. The fact that their relationship is spread over three movies isn't what makes them so special, however. It's because Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy's chemistry is so natural, honestly depicting the highs and lows of an ongoing relationship. Oh, I hate this. Me too. The train is about to be. Hawk and Delpy fittingly contributed to the screenplays for both sequels, making their rapport even more believable. Maybe I'm not like that. Oh, please. What? That's all you think about? What? Women. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm getting a lot of attention. <laughs> but you never stop ogling girls like... Number eight, Sam Wheat and Molly Jensen, Ghost. Audiences immediately fell in love with Sam and Molly thanks to their immortal pottery session. Now just let the clay slide between your fingers. This makes it especially tragic when Sam dies in Molly's arms shortly thereafter. <laughs> Even after death, Sam dedicates himself to protecting the love of his life. The two spend a majority of ghosts so close to each other and yet so far. As fantastic as the premise is, however, the film is surprisingly effective in its depiction of losing a loved one. I've always loved you. <sighs> Ditto. While their life together was cut short, Sam and Molly's romance will always have a place in cinematic history. It's amazing, Molly. The love inside. You take it with you. Number seven, Danny Zuko and Sandy Olsen, Greece. Sandy! Danny? What are you, what are you doing here? I, I, I thought you were going back to Australia. We had a change of plans. Greece may not be the most authentic representation of high school or the 50s. The themes it touches on, however, do ring true, particularly the relationship between Danny and Sandy. Tell me about it, Stan. The musical's best songs all tie into their summer nights and hopeless devotion to each other. With one being a greaser and the other being a good girl, though, their contrasting cliques keep driving them apart. My parents want to invite you out for tea on Sunday. Do you want to come? I don't like tea. You don't know how to drink tea? Well, I don't like parents. 
However, despite their differences, their chemistry is so strong you might as well call it Grease Lightning. Well, I could be Grease Lightning! Grease Lightning! We'll get some overhead lifters and four bell quads, oh yeah. Number 6. Noah Calhoun and Allie Hamilton, The Notebook. I oh, know I said that I wanted you to make love to me, but I think yeah. you're gonna have to talk me through this. The Notebook is a textbook example of a chick flick. Now say you're a bird too. If you're a bird, I'm a bird. We're willing to overlook its cliche and corny moments, though, because the leads share such an enchanting bond. I have to warn you, I'm a cheap drunk. A couple more of these and you're gonna be carrying me right out of here. Well, you go slow then. I don't want to have to take advantage of you. You can't help but root for Rachel McAdams' Alley and Ryan Gosling's Noah to overcome the obstacles of social class, war, and life in general, building up to an iconic kiss in the rain. James Garner and Gina Rowland's scenes in the future are equally emotional, as a devastating disease unravels Noah and Allie's love story. What's going to happen when I can't remember anything anymore? Get the tissues ready. What will you do? I'll be here. I'll never leave you. Number 5. Johnny Castle and Francis Baby Houseman, Dirty Dancing. And I Or two lovers we wouldn't dare put in a corner. Nobody puts Baby in a corner. Dirty Dancing tells the story of Baby and Johnny, two people from different classes that are unified by their love of dance. All right, one, two, three. Oh, sorry. Good. If you'd like to know, no, no, no. Being a movie that's largely about dance, it's fitting that their chemistry primarily shines through music and choreography. As a matter of fact, Baby and Johnny's relationship can pretty much be summed up in the exhilarating final number with the Oscar-winning I've Had the Time of My Life. No, I never felt like this before. Yes, I swear, it's a truth. Amazing how music, dance, and love all seem to be part of the same puzzle. What's your real name, baby? Francis. The first woman in the cabinet. <laughs> Francis, that's a, that's a real grown up name. Number four, Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara, Gone with the Wind. Look at me. I love you more than I've ever loved any woman. And I've waited longer for you than I've ever waited for any woman. When we think of perfect casting in film, Vivian Lee as Scarlett O'Hara and Clark Gable as Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind instantly comes to mind. Ladies have never held any charm for me. First you take a low, common advantage of me, then you insult me. It's a match made in heaven, even if Scarlet and Rhett's love story isn't always so heavenly. Rhett, you go. Where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That's not to say they don't have plenty of timeless romantic moments together. However, between the death of their daughter and Scarlet always holding a torch for Ashley, it isn't shocking that these two could not work things out. You've lived in dirt so long you can't understand anything else. And you're jealous of something you can't understand. Nevertheless, this is still a romance for the ages. Can I really kiss you now? On the forehead like a good brother. No, thanks. I'll wait and hope for better things. Number three. Harry Burns and Sally Albright when Harry met Sally. <laughs> when Harry met Sally is among the most identifiable love stories ever told. What about you? I'm fine. How's married life? Not so good. I am getting a divorce. Part of that is because the attraction between the leads isn't instantaneous. What are you saying? That they fake orgasm? It's possible. Get out of here. Why? Most women at one time or another have faked it. Upon first meeting, they don't think much of one another. Over the years, however, they keep bumping into each other and eventually form a friendship. Harry, I think this takes a long time. It might be months before we're actually able to enjoy going out with someone new. Yeah. That friendship evolves into a sexual relationship, which evolves into something even more. What are you doing for New Year's? Are you going to the Tyler's party? Because I don't have a date. And if you don't have a date, we always said that if neither one of us had a date, we could be together for New Year's. 
In the end, Harry declares his true feelings for Sally with a speech that demonstrates it's the little things that make people fall in love for good. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. Number two, Jack Dawson and Rose DeWitt Bucator, Titanic. All right, open your eyes. Titanic harkens back to the glory days when Hollywood epics were big, thrilling, and complete with a captivating love story. I'm getting off with you. This is crazy. <laughs> I know. It doesn't make any sense. The film takes its time building up the romance between the penniless Jack and upper-class Rose, which pays off in a pretty spectacular way. There are too many great scenes to count, from their first kiss at the ship's bow to their nude drawing session. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Wearing this. All right. Wearing only this. This is what makes us care so much when their lives are put in peril in the film's second half. I've got you. I won't let go. Come on, I've got you. Although the unsinkable ship goes down, we'll never let go of Jack and Rose. I'll never let go. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I won't always come for you. But how can you be sure? This is true love. I think this happens every day. Now, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I vow that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the moon. The inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb? Unless that thy love prove likewise variable. It does strike me as, well, surreal that I'm allowed to see you naked. You and every person in this country. Gordy, I'm sorry. What is it about men and nudity, huh? Tell me something true. Something true. I hate peas. Didn't think I'd hear from you, Kane. Yeah. I figured you were sore from that punch. Well, that next summer, I drove back up to Brokeback and talked to Gary about a job and told me he hadn't been back, so I left. Number one, Rick Blaine and Ilsa Lund, Casablanca. Now, now. He's looking at you, kid. When it comes to cinematic love stories, Casablanca is as classic as it gets. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. Rick Blaine and Ilsa Lund are star-crossed lovers who experience the happiest period of their lives together in Paris. I forgot we said no questions. Well, only one answer can Take care of all our questions. Due to bad timing and unfortunate circumstances, however, they separate on a heartbreaking note. I'll be leaving Casablanca soon and we'll never see each other again. We knew very little about each other when we were in love in Paris. If we leave it that way, maybe we'll remember those days, not Casablanca. After coming back together years later, the two must decide what's more important, their love for each other or the greater good. We loved each other once. If those days meant anything at all to me. I wouldn't bring up Paris if I were you. It's poor salesmanship. Please, please listen to me. The final scene may see the end of Rick and Ilsa's relationship, but at least it marks the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Do you agree with our list? You think this story's gonna have a happy ending? Happy endings are just stories that haven't finished yet. Who are your favorite on-screen lovers? Stars are perfect. Not us. Not us. We are here to ruin ourselves and, and to break our hearts. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Buenas noches.